So we're winding down to the end of the year and Black Magic releases one more update for DaVinci Resolve 16.1.2. Today we're going to talk about all the new updates. Explore a wide selection of pre-made creative tools for DaVinci Resolve like titles, transitions, slideshows and infographs like bar charts and callouts, and much, much more. Link in the description for more information. So I'm guessing that we're possibly going to be seeing one more update until NAB when they are going to probably launch their next version of DaVinci Resolve. And I'm guessing that the update is probably going to be for all of the new Mac Pros. If you got one of the new Mac Pros, let me know what your experience is with it and running DaVinci Resolve on it because it's probably a beast compared to a lot of other machines if you've always worked with Mac. So let's dive into this one. This one, 16.1.2. There were a lot of updates. So if you wanna see the whole list of everything, I'll have a link in the description going to my website with every, sing every single thing listed there, as well as where to download if you want the studio version or the free version. Both updates are free, just like all updates of DaVinci Resolve. Um, so you don't have to be concerned with, oh, I have a license for this. No, you. If you have a DaVinci Resolve license, you can get every update that comes out. So the first couple of things on the list were mainly about different codecs and uh, increasing their performance. And then I guess Red also worked with NVIDIA and built a new SDK for Red files. So I guess that that was also implemented into DaVinci Resolve. And overall, my understanding is that uh, better performance. So that's always a plus. And then sticking with cameras, uh, Blackmagic Raw uh, also got an update. I did make a post on my website about it. If you want the player for Mac, Windows, or Linux to be able to read those files without having to boot up DaVinci Resolve. But uh, with a lot of the different camera updates, I guess the broadcast Ursa camera also got an update. And some of the support for those files also was implemented into the new DaVinci Resolve. So if you're working with one of those cameras, you're definitely gonna wanna update also. Now jumping over to the edit page, there's two new modes that you can pick from if you wanted to only add audio or if you wanna add in only video. And that's right over here, you have your only audio or only video options. So if I was to only pick video, and let's say I have a clip here, I can bring this in, I'm only gonna be bringing in the uh, video. Vice versa, if I take that same clip and I have audio only, and I bring that in, it's only going to be bringing in the audio. Initially, I thought that this would only limit what you're able to edit, but if I was to bring them both together, and I only have audio right now, I can still cut both of them if they're not selected and ripple both of them as well. So I was a little confused at this and then I realized that if you're working off of the strips, that might make more sense if you're only picking little pieces off of these and bringing them in to only have audio or video. I still have the mindset of the edit page, so some of this stuff is a little hard for my head to wrap around, but those are the two new options that are there for uh, bringing stuff in. From my understanding, that's how that works. So then the next one is the ability to add in and out points on the cut page. So I can take, like let's come into this clip a little bit and remember our markers here. When I add an in point, now I have a new marker here and I can come over here and make an out point here. So now I have this little area right in here. And let's say I want it, this particular clip here um, and I have like my end point where I want it to be, but I only wanted it right in there where I click this and lay it on top and it'll only fill up just that little area and use just enough of the clip to fill in there if I wanted to. So that's the new in and out points. Um, and then also using one of the edit tools to add it on there. I also, if you noticed, I added a, I did video only, so I didn't add in that audio there. So that was something cool that you can also do as well. The next one is support for audio while trimming. And this is pretty cool. Um, I don't have my audio set up correctly right now, or actually, yes, I do. Um, so as I pull this, we're playing audio um, as we're real, rolling it in. So we could say, okay, I want to, you know, bring it in right, be, right as he's talking. And I think that that's something that I'm actually really uh, gonna like. Once you come over to the edit page, you're gonna see this right here, and you might be like, what is that? And at first, I didn't really understand it because. 
it works kind of weird. Let me explain. If I click this zoom, it zooms in, I can see everything. If I click this zoom, it zooms out. Okay? So I'm clicking this one. This is the full extended zoom. It zooms in. I click this one, it zooms out, right? The third one, we'll come back to that. But these two, this is how they work, right? Now watch this. If I take everything, I throw everything that's on my timeline on here, so my my zoom or my uh, my timeline overall is bigger. I click this button, it zooms out. Now when I click this button, it zooms back in. It, now this one zooms out, and if I come over here, I zoom in a lot. Now I can only see this little bit, and I can see the whole thing. So that's that's weird. I don't understand that functionality currently, but that's kind of weird. This third one here is a custom zoom. So that is just using this uh, controller. If you come to one of these and you start moving this, it's going to automatically jump over to this one. Something else is weird. So if I was to, let's say I zoom in a lot, right? So that's the custom zoom. So this one and this are kind of working in together, right? I click this, I can zoom out and see everything on my timeline. I click this, it zooms in. When I'm clicking between both of these, this little thing doesn't move because that's part of the custom, right? But if I zoom in and now zoom in more, all of a sudden it jumps over here and it zooms in even more, right? But watch this. If I come here and now if I zoom out, it just jumps. You see that? It just jumps. The custom automatically jumps to whatever my zoom point is and back out. But if I zoom in, like whatever, I zoom in and then I go to move this, then it kind of like jumps around because it's depending on where you're at on here. So for me, it's gonna take a little bit to get used to that. I don't know what's going on with when your timeline's kind of on the shorter side and it zooms out when the one tool zooms in when you have a longer timeline. It's kind of weird. Don't exactly understand that. Um, that's a thing. This overall, this over, like overall is pretty cool because you can quickly zoom in and out. You can see the whole timeline, zoom back in, get detailed, click this button, goes back to whatever your custom was set at, right? That's pretty cool. Even though I, I zoom in and out a lot, right? Just something that I've been used to doing, but these are cool because now I'm gonna add keyboard shortcuts to them. Uh, but then if you have a short timeline, it zooms out, I don't know. Uh, next one is your indicators when you add uh, the points. I already talked about that. When we come over here, we add in our in and out points. It automatically adds in our little indicators. The cool thing about that is if you were to pull something in, you can now snap to those new indicators, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't really have an exact reason to use it, but it is pretty cool that it does exist. Um, for the people that do use the indicators and use the cut page. Other thing too is now, I guess this wasn't a thing before, but now you can change the size of these two pieces here. So that's something cool. I think this was always here, but now I think this is like now new that you can you know, move that around depending on you know your screen size or whatever. Uh, also the uh, close up, which is this little tool here. It's when you add in a new clip uh, it automatically like punches in. Uh, they've changed it to just randomize in between 20 and 40% um, to add variance. That's a thing. I guess it's gonna speed up some people's workflows. I feel like with it zooming in at different ranges, it's going to make people do extra to reframe up things um, that need to be framed in, if, especially if you're doing a 40% zoom. And then there was a bunch of updates with the keyboard. I don't really have the keyboard. If you've seen my Instagram, I talked about the new keyboard that I have um, to go along with all of the white aesthetic that's on my desk as well. Um, I like this one. It has German switches in it, like key switches. Feels really good. I like it. Uh, but yeah. One, one that lit up, you know, so that's why I went with this one. And the other one is kind of expensive. I haven't been able to test this one, but there's been improvements for the collaborative projects. In the future, I might be doing something with collaborative projects, so let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in, and I might try to get the ball rolling a little bit quicker on that, so. 
The next one is about monitors, and I thought this was like display monitors, but when I was digging into a little bit more, this is actually, I believe, audio monitors. I could be completely wrong with this because both things have changed a little bit. So if I come up here to workspace and I come down to like the, uh, the clean feed, now this is if you want like one of your displays to be full screen of whatever your project is, right? They change these to pick up whatever the monitor is outputting as a device uh, tag, right? So now it just says like for the monitors I have, just generic PMP monitor one, two. That's what I thought it was. And I dug around and I don't know how to change the names of these. Um, so I don't think it's that. Uh, what I think it is, is if I come into preferences and I come into system and come in here to video and audio, when I look at external monitors as well as monitor sets for these, you can rename. So you can rename these. So if you have something and you're using uh, Fairlight a lot and you have like a bunch of different monitor setups, that would probably be a good thing to be able to rename some, right? Especially if you're using more than stereo and you know, you're like 7.2 or whatever. Um, that would be something that you might want. I don't know. I don't really use that kind of thing. So I think that's what they were talking about though. There was a couple of things with like color grading, but I feel like it's kind of uh, not really for my audience. It was more about like Adobe Vision and stuff like that. Uh, being able to color, uh, copy midpoints. If you never use Adobe Vision uh, and, and like HDR 10 plus, that kind of stuff, you need to have like specific hardware to be able to properly monitor that stuff. Uh, but if you were ever interested in playing around with it, you come over to your project manager, you come into uh, color management and you scroll down a little bit and your Adobe Vision to be able to enable that as well as your HDR 10 plus it's there. But like I said, if you don't have the proper hardware to monitor these signals, you're not going to be able to get a, you know, a look that is going to look half decent uh, when you output it to different other displays. So I wouldn't play around with it unless you have a project that specifically needs it and you have the ridiculously expensive hardware to be able to properly use that stuff. Then there was a couple of like other little ones for uh, like syncing um, clips in folders on the cut page and stuff like that. Um, and then they said overall, uh, performance and stability has been improved. And pretty much what that means to me is the things that were talked about most on the forms, the black magic forms. If you ever have an issue, I highly suggest go there first read how to submit your issue. You know, they want to know your hardware. They want to know exactly what it is that happened so that they could recreate it. But the things that were posted there most are the things that they then dive into fixing um, stability issues and stuff like that. If you have a system that um, does meet the system requirements, first off, you have to be able to meet the system requirements and have an ongoing issue with something. Uh, you post it on there, they get enough of those. Those are the things that kind of get fixed. Um, I know a lot of people in my uh, audience have, well, not a lot of people, but some people have issues with DaVinci Resolve and you really have to make sure that you have the system requirements to be able to run DaVinci Resolve. Now DaVinci Resolve will run on almost anything, but it might not be stable and your system might not have the system requirements that are stated as the minimum system requirements in such you might have you know, stability issues and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of all I got for you today. Like I said, down in the description, I will have a link to my blog article showing everything that's been updated. I also have there uh, the minimum system requirements for if you're just using DaVinci Resolve itself or if you're using DaVinci Resolve and the Fusion page. Fusion page needs a little bit more. Uh, but I'll also in that, uh, blog post, I'll also have links to the download for if you're using Mac, Windows, and Linux, and if you're using the free version or the studio version, but that's kind of all I got for you today. If you've played around with this, let me know in the description what your experiences were. Also, if you have one of those new Mac pros, I would also be interested in hearing your experience with that currently. 
if you have questions about DaVinci Resolve or are having a problem with your project, I have a link in the description that goes to my private Facebook group that you can ask the community your questions and someone in there will probably be able to help you. But with that being said, that's all I got for you for today. My name's JR and thanks for watching.